I was surprised by how well Bun performed in the previous benchmark, so I decided to compare it with Golang. In my mind, Go is in different class compared to JavaScript. In this video, we'll first compare Bun with Golang using standard library. We'll use slash API slash devices endpoint to return a hardcoded device in JSON format to the client and we'll focus on four golden signals. Since these are user-facing applications, our main focus will be on latency, specifically using P99 percentile. Next is throughput, which for web application means the number of requests per second that each application can handle. Then we'll look at saturation by measuring how full the service is. More specifically, CPU and memory usage of the applications relative to the limits defined in Kubernetes. We'll also need to measure CPU throttling as it plays a significant role in Kubernetes. When a service is throttled, it immediately increases latency and degrades overall performance. Finally, we'll measure availability by looking at the number of failed requests relative to the total number of requests over a specific period of time. Now, most benchmarks focus on synthetic tests, but I also want to see how these applications perform in real-world scenarios. I use different use cases in different benchmarks. In this one, we'll add a persistence layer using MongoDB database. Every time application receives a POST request, it will parse the request body, generate UUID, and save the item into MongoDB. In addition to standard metrics, I instrumented each application with Prometheus metrics to measure how long it takes for each application to save a device to the database. Additionally, someone suggested including database metrics, so I have also added CPU usage of MongoDB itself. And in these tests, we'll generate enough load to find the breaking point of both applications. I deploy both applications to production-ready Kubernetes cluster in AWS using large instances for the applications, each with two CPUs and 8 GB of memory. Since BAN uses a single thread for most operations, I limit each application to one CPU, which can be viewed as 100% of a 100 millisecond interval in a cycle that repeats indefinitely and enforced by C groups. Additionally, I allocate 256 megabyte of memory. I also scale applications horizontally, deploying two instances of each application on each EC2 instance. To generate load, I use Graviton instances, which are a bit cheaper, and deploy 20 ports for each application. These ports gradually increase the number of virtual clients until both applications fail. Any advice on how to improve either application is welcome, as well as pull requests, which I typically merge within a single day. Alright, let's get started. In the first test, we evaluating how well each application can process HTTP requests and return hardcoded values in JSON format to the client. On the top right graph, we'll measure throughput, which shows how many requests each application can handle. On the left-hand side, we have latency, which measures how long it takes to respond. From the start, you can see that one application takes significantly more time to process each request. It's also important to note that we measure latency from the client side to make it as accurate as possible. Next, we'll look at saturation, which indicates how full the service is. You can see a trend in CPU usage. Go uses more CPU time and will be the first to experience throttling. Since I deployed two replicas for each application, we measuring average CPU usage. On the right hand side, we have memory usage, which only becomes critical when both services are overloaded. Next, we have availability. In this test, the average request takes less than one millisecond to complete, so I set the client timeout to 100 milliseconds. When that timeout is exceeded, you'll see a drop in availability graph. 
up until 60 to 70% CPU usage, you won't see any throttling. At around 23,000 requests per second, CPU usage differences between two applications become more apparent. By this point, Golang starts losing its advantage in latency. For this type of application, once CPU usage hits 40%, performance starts to degrade and latency increases. By around 46,000 requests per second, Golang starts failing behind BAN in terms of number of requests it can handle. At 61,000 requests per second, the differences becomes even more noticeable. Golang's latency increases to 10 milliseconds and Kubernetes begins throttle it, which affects performance. On the other hand, BAN maintains low latency, although some requests start to time out, it's not many, but you'll notice drops in availability graph. At 69,000 requests per second, it becomes clear that Golang can't handle any more requests and begins caching some of them. All right, let's continue. At around 90,000 requests per second, BAN also hits its limit and gets throttled by Kubernetes. Now, let me open each graph for the full test duration. As you can see, the test took around two hours to complete. First, we have requests per second. Next, client latency. After Golang starts degrading at around 40% CPU usage, its latency surpasses bonds, but before that, its latency was much lower. Next, we have CPU usage. Then, memory usage. You can see memory spikes in Golang when it's unable to process all the requests and starts caching them. Eventually, memory usage reaches 100% and Kubernetes kills application multiple times due to out-of-memory errors. After that, we have availability graph. Finally, we have CPU throttling. If you're building client-facing applications where latency is important, you may want to consider Golang because up until 40% CPU usage, it performs much better. On the other hand, if you care more about throughput and latency is less critical, such as internal microservice, BAN might be the better choice. Now, let's start the second test. Most benchmarks use simple tasks and algorithms to measure performance, but in reality, you would rely heavily on external libraries, and your application performance would depend on how well those libraries developed. Also, almost all applications require some kind of persistence layer, such as a database. In the previous BAN vs Node.js benchmark, I used Postgres relational database. In this test, I have replaced it with a MongoDB document database. If you're interested in how BAN performed with Postgres, you can check out that video. I instrumented both applications with Prometheus metrics, so we can measure the duration of each function call. In this test, when application receives a POST request, it generates UUID and stores the complete object in the database. You can find the link to the source code in the video description. I also use Prometheus histogram to measure how long it takes to insert data into MongoDB. Additionally, based on feedback I received, I'm now measuring Mongo CPU usage along with the other standard metrics. In this test, Golang performs significantly better than BAN. The latency for both the client and database insert is almost half of what BAN has. Golang also has much lower CPU usage compared to BAN. At around 7,500 requests per second, BAN starts to degrade and drops some requests. Kubernetes also begins throttle it, which causes the latency to increase. Let's continue and find Golang's breaking point. 
at around 24,000 requests per second, Golang starts to degrade as well, reaching nearly 100% CPU usage. As you can see, when the test involves more than just returning static responses like in the previous test, Golang performs much better. In real-world scenarios, you will definitely need more than just static responses. Based on my experience and benchmarks I've run, BUN performs very well with static synthetic benchmarks, but when it's time to do real work, such as interacting with a database, BUN loses many of its advantages. Even Node.js performs better in these cases. So I suggest testing your specific use case before choosing BUN if your goal is to improve performance. Alright, let me show each graph for the entire test duration. First, we have requests per second graph. Then, client latency. Database insert latency. MongoDB CPU usage. Application CPU usage. Memory usage. Availability graph. And finally, CPU throttling. I have other benchmarks that you might find interesting. And if you know how to improve any of these applications, please feel free to submit a pull request. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.